Money is like sex. It is so important to humankind. People are literally dying for not having enough money. And yet it is such a taboo to talk about it. Welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk. I am your host, Wendy, and this is the space where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, and in today's episode, we are finally going to talk about money. Yes, this is a topic that I think it's so damn important to have conversations as adults, Because I realized that the more I talk about money with my friends and my family and my fiancé, the better I get at managing finances together in our lives. And to be honest, I've been putting off talking about this in my podcast because I know that I am not a financial expert. And I also feel like I am far from being successful in my financial journey. So I wasn't confident to talk about it. But I also feel like there are some things in my journey, some mistakes that I made that I really wish that me in my 20s would have known earlier. And I want to share these things in my journey. What I would think about this episode is to think about it as personal finance 101. Specifically, I will be talking about savings, credit card debts, and expenses tracking. So these are like really back to basic stuff that if you are looking for investment and financial growth tips, you can skip this episode. (laughs) Or if you are curious, you can stay on to listen about what are the stupid things that I've done. In fact, as I'm recording this episode, I feel kind of naked sharing about the embarrassing things that I didn't know about money. But again... The money journey, it's very different for everyone. And because I didn't know these things in my 20s, I'm pretty sure that there are someone out there who also didn't know about these things in their 20s. And I know that this episode is going to help you. (laughs) Anyway, so I am going to start this episode off by actually laying a background of where I come from. Because I find that when it comes to money, How you are raised and the environment that you grow up in really affects your approach when it comes to money management. And I feel like by sharing my story, it might help you to relate better or to understand better in terms of why I make certain decisions in my life. So I come from a very typical working class family where my dad is the sole breadwinner working as a supervisor in a factory and my mom was a housewife. So both of them were not highly educated. They were only educated till they were 15 years old. And so whatever they know about money, it's pretty much based on what they learn from their siblings or their own upbringings and probably by observing those around them. Because Growing up, talking about money, it's kind of like a taboo. So we don't really talk about finances or how to manage finances in my house. Um, But I do want to say that I am very blessed that my parents really dedicated their entire lives to give the best that they can afford for my siblings and I. I grew up having my mom's home-cooked meal every single day. She would drop us off to school and then pick us up again. They would sign us up for additional tuition classes. They even let us attend art classes because that's what we're interested in. They buy us gifts when we have good grades. Like they really did everything that they can. But I also grew up knowing that in terms of tertiary education, the only thing that my family could afford is the government universities. And I'm not saying that the public university is bad. It's just that there are a lot less control that you can get when it comes to picking up the courses that you want and stuff like that. So by the time that I was about 16 years old, I kind of knew that that is my only option or I could kind of try to get a scholarship. So I really did work hard during my final two years of high school to be really good academically, but also 
in terms of extracurricular as well. Like I really did the best that I could to boost up my profile as the best as I could. And fortunately, because of my hard work and also some luck, that at the age of 18, I actually scored myself a full scholarship, which not only cover for my tuition fee, but also for my living expenses all through my pre-university and my degree when I was living in Canada. So that was when that I had to learn to manage my finances when I was a clueless 18-year-old kid. And I would say that while I didn't have financial backing from my family when I started off, I also didn't have student loan when I graduated, which is a very fortunate thing. And what I know about money today, it's really an accumulation of the money mistakes that I've made so far. And also through learning online and reading books and getting advice from friends and mentors that obviously are more experienced in terms of managing money. And the first thing that I want to talk about today is the importance of savings. I know, this may come as a common sense thing for a lot of you who might come from a middle or upper class family. But trust me, for the working class, right, this is actually something that needs to be highlighted. Because from where I come from, it is very common to work hard to make some money. And because you feel like you've worked very hard and you deserve it, you would spend it all, (laughs) right? And it doesn't help that with marketing and with social media where everyone just seems to be living the good life, where you always feel the need to have the next big thing. You feel the need to have the latest iPhone or the luxury bag or to travel even when you don't really have the means to do so. And savings is more like an afterthought after spending for what you need and what you want. It is not a mandatory thing that you set aside before you spend all your money. Growing up, I didn't know that you are supposed to have savings that you are not supposed to touch at all You know, savings that are supposed to be used for growing more money through investment or savings to prepare in advance for a big expenses. I just keep the extra that I have every month in an account, hoping that it will grow. Like that's how I approach savings when I was growing up. And in fact, I even judge my classmates who are always very frugal and I thought that they were stingy. But looking back, I feel like an idiot right now for judging them. But anyways, mistakes are made. We learn as we grow. So I only learned in the last few years that with the money that you make, you should always set aside for savings first before you spend them. And what you need to have, I feel like as the most basic thing is to have an emergency fund or some people call it the rainy day fund which is basically a saving that you set aside for up to three to six months of your living expenses. So the money that you would have needed for your monthly commitments and your groceries and the important stuff, in case you suddenly lose your job or your ability to work, you are still able to sustain yourself with this saving. And in fact, with the pandemic happening in the last few years, some experts are even advising people to have up to 12 months of savings for emergency fund. But I think this is really dependent on the individual. Like for someone like me, I feel like three to six months of emergency fund is enough because I know that with the skill sets that I have, with the network that I have and with the resources that I have, I can easily pick up freelance gigs online or to create an offer to sell it online if I were to lose my job. So I wanted to allocate more of the money that I'm making now into other purposes. And after you have an emergency fund that you feel comfortable about, the next thing that you want to create is sinking fund. 
I find that sinking fun is the best thing that happened to me or that I learned in the last few years because it has given me a big piece in my mind when it comes to managing my monthly expenses. So sinking funds are basically little buckets of money that you prepare in advance for big expenses that you anticipate. So it could be sinking fund for travel plans or wedding, or maybe it's for an annual big expenses like your car insurance or your car maintenance. I also create sinking funds for Christmas because that is the holiday that I spend the most on. And this year, I also created sinking fund for gifts. I actually set aside money at the start of the year so that I don't need to worry every month when I need to buy birthday gifts or to get wedding gifts. I have an account that I can take it out of. I find that sinking funds really help me to reduce that kind of feeling where you feel like, oh, why do I have this unexpected expenses? Why do I feel like I'm always not making enough money? Like having sinking funds has allowed me to not feel that way as much. And generally, I find that savings has given me a huge sense of security. Just to highlight a few things is that because of savings, In my mid-twenties, when I had severe depression, I was able to quit my job and take a mental health break for eight months. And when I got laid off from my previous company with less than a month notice, I didn't really have to panic to find another job immediately because I had savings to help me buffer my expenses for the next month. But having said that, right... Your money also has compounding effect, meaning that the sooner you have savings, the sooner you can use it to accumulate more wealth from the interest rate. And with the interest rate that you get at an earlier stage, you can compound it to be a bigger amount in the future. So the second thing that I wish I knew, like something that if I can turn back time to when I was in university again, is I would have started working as soon as I started university. I actually did work part-time in my final year of university and was able to save up quite a bit of money, even though I was only working for a few months. So imagine that if I were to work through my four years in university, I would have been able to actually build an emergency fund as a student And by the time that I graduated and started making more money from my first paycheck, those money could have been pushed into an investment account. Like I can actually start focusing on growing the wealth instead of building the foundation. And would I think that me in university is still not ready, is still not capable of managing my finances? I'd say no. Because I feel like personal finance is like, a muscle, like it doesn't matter when you start managing your finances, the sooner you learn to track and manage it, the sooner you do it, the sooner you get used to it and get better at it. So yeah, if you are in your early 20s, if you are still in your university, consider to start working now. Okay, next thing that I want to talk about is credit card debt. There are two things that I wish I knew about credit card. The first thing is that credit cards are not evil. Okay, credit cards are actually great for building credit scores. And if you are strategic with it, you get a lot of points and benefits and discounts and cashbacks and stuff like that. As long as you use your credit card wisely and you pay your bills on time. It's actually very good for you. In fact, the sooner you get your credit card, the sooner you can build your credit score, the better it is. So if you are just eligible to get a credit card now, if you just started working, go get a credit card. But again, make sure to use it wisely. And that takes me to point number two, which is I wish I knew earlier that you should never max out your credit card only to pay the minimum monthly. If you are making a big purchase that you know for a fact 
that you cannot cover with your expected income in the coming month, make sure you have a plan to actually aggressively make that income to pay back the debt. Because if not, you would get sucked into an endless debt cycle that forever leaves you feeling like you will never make enough money. So I have a good news to share. And it's that I finally paid off my credit card debt. Guys, it's an accomplishment for an idiot like me. Come on, cheer for me. (laughs) Okay, so over a year ago, back in 2021... I swiped my credit card for a five-figure investment in a sales coach. Because at that point, I have a program, but I'm not good at selling. And I really wanted to get better at it, to get myself out of the hole that I was in, right? At first, I was really motivated and I really applied everything that I learned in the program. And in fact, it really worked. Like within a month or two months, I actually made back half of the debt that I got into. Like I was very surprised that I was actually capable of making 10K a month. It works, right? Except that after the program ended in a month or two months, I kind of lost my motivation and I started doubting about the program that I was selling and I had a lot of questions about what I want to do in my life. And that is when I started to kind of just fall in this journey where, because at that point of my life, I was only making a part-time salary on my day job and I wasn't making money on my side hustle. So naturally, I was not having enough to pay off my debt because I was only making enough to cover for my living expenses. I was going through a very stressful season in my life financially. I made it through it, but every single month, I was only paying the minimum that I needed for my credit card statement. And sometimes, in some months, because my monthly expenses was just nice, I might even need to add on more expenses on my credit card. So I was basically in a loop where I would pay like 500 ringgit And then I would spend like 300 ringgit on the card again. And then the following month, I would pay like 300 ringgit. And then I might add on 500 ringgit of expenses onto the card. So my credit card balance was pretty much the same every single month. It wasn't reducing. And so I was constantly paying for the interest rate on the credit card, which we all know are the highest among all debts. And I was in that loop for almost a year-ish. Until the end of last year was when I decided that I can no longer be in this loop because it is very suffering. And I learned to really track all of my expenses. And that is actually point number three or four that I wanted to share with you today is that I wish I knew earlier in my personal finance journey to track all of your expenses. I know it may sound very stressful and intense to be tracking every single item that you are spending, but chances are your 20s is when you start building the foundation of your finances by yourself. So you really need to know where your money is coming in from and where it is going out to. In my early 20s, when I first started working, I have a vague idea of how much is going to rent, how much is going to food and transportation. But the rest of the expenses are kind of like a blur. Like I know that I would spend money on buying clothes or going out for drinks. I would spend some on traveling, some on savings. Like there was never a clear picture of how much my money is flowing in and out of my account until... I started tracking my finances item by item last December. So I've tried multiple methods before, like noting down my expenses on a notebook or in my Notion or in an Excel sheet. I've tried many different methods. But what really worked for me was when I downloaded this app from the app store called Money Manager. It is by a company called Railbyte Inc. I would link the app in the show notes for you. Um, It is a free app 
for you to track all of your expenses. But I did pay for the non-ads version because that app has been working very well for me. And the paid version allows you to manage it on your desktop as well. But the free version was actually very good already. So what I did was I actually added every single account that I have from my bank accounts to my saving accounts to every single credit cards that I have, every single e-wallet that I have. I actually added every single account into the app and I really track my expenses item by item every day, every week, every month. So I have built this habit for the, almost a year now. So what I would do is I would track my expenses every week. So on Saturdays or Sundays, I would just sit down and insert item by item how much I spend on parking, on food, on coffee, whatsoever. And then on a monthly basis, when I get my salary, that is when I really sit down for two to three hours to kind of review, um, you know, what are the spending that I've done in the past month and what are the spending that I'm anticipating in the coming months. And having this habit, has allowed me to really understand the pattern in my spending and to really learn new things about my personal finances. So here are some interesting things that I found out through this habit of tracking my expenses. The first, and I would say the most interesting that I want to share with you, is that I realized that every month, the money going out of my account is actually more than my take-home salary. I know this sounds scary and a bit dangerous, but I do want to remind you that earlier in the year, I have already created sinking funds. So quite a number of the expenses that I'm making every month actually come from my sinking fund instead of my take-home salary. I hope that makes sense to you. So we are still good in that area, but I know for a fact that I need a raise, I need to make more money, I need more income streams. I am well aware of it. <laughs> Another thing that I learned by tracking my expenses is that there are categories that I didn't know I'm spending a lot on. So earlier, I was sharing with you that I created a sinking fund for gifts this year. And that was because through tracking my expenses every month, I realized that I'm putting a lot of money to gifts, that like I'm spending a lot on other people. And that's when I realized that oh, it's better that I allocate money for it ahead of time so that I don't need to worry about it throughout the years. And because I'm constantly tracking my expenses, there are certain budgets that I realize have to be adjusted over the time. Like during the pandemic, I wasn't spending a lot on transportation because I was staying home and working from home most of the time. But in the past year, my budget for transportation has already increased because I'm going to the office more often. And in the last few months, inflation has been crazy. So budget for groceries has also been increased in the past few months. And I would have to adjust my budget from other areas to these areas. It may come a day where I finally have an assistant or an accountant to track all this for me and I can spend without looking at my expenses. But at this rate of my life, I am happily tracking all these things because I think that it has really helped me to understand the flow of my money. And if anything, it really helps me to want to make more, to be more motivated to increase my income and diversify my income stream because I realize that if I want to continue my current lifestyle or to continue to improve my lifestyle, I would have to figure out a way to increase the income area of things. So those are the three things that I want to share with you today. Savings, credit card debts, and tracking expenses. And I find that having a good foundation in terms of personal finances has also made me more ready to become a better entrepreneur because if you're not able to manage your finances for you, one person personally, how are you going to be good at managing the cash flow for your business where the figures are a lot bigger, where there is a lot cost involved and where there's a lot of stakeholders involved. 
even though I feel quite self-conscious that the things that I'm sharing feel so basic. But the truth is, me in my 20s didn't know about this thing. So I know for a fact that whatever I share today is going to be new things for some of you. And I really hope that it is going to help you to build a better foundation to your finances. And if you are currently still in that that journey, if you are embarrassed about your journey, I hope that by me sharing about my mistakes, you don't feel so stupid. I feel like with finances, it's never too late to learn and never too late to start again. Like I shared earlier, I do intend to bring in more finance experts to share with us more advanced tips for us to grow together. So if you have any questions about finances or about adulting in general, feel free to fill in the form in my show notes to request for the topics and let me know what you want to know more about. The reason I created this podcast, it's really for us to feel less alone in our adulthood journey. And the truth is, adulting is tough where you have to figure out how to manage your own finances, your home, your health, your career, your relationships, everything, right? So I hope that this space can continue to serve you in that area. So please don't be shy and just let me know what are the questions that you have. If you find this episode to be helpful, make sure to share it with your friends so that more people can benefit from the lessons that we've learned. And I guess this is the end of this episode. I would see you in the next one. And this is goodbye. Goodbye.